okay so anything that we call as a network uh, is really a graph in this course okay so i will interchange use the term network or a graph uh, so a lot of things in real world could be modeled uh, as a network and uh, again uh, by that we can also model as a graph so for example the world wide web is a network of web pages you know uh, and um, the social networks out there people who know each other family or uh, you know wherever uh, college student or uh, employer set up people who work so all these things can be modeled as a network uh not only that uh, metabolic network you know the chemical reactions which chemical will have a reaction with which other chemical the biological networks like protein protein interaction networks which protein will uh, have some reaction with another protein and so on the genetic networks a lot of networks are out there in the real world so a graph is basically a uh, representation of the network um i would say it's more of abstraction so what i mean by abstraction is this so look at these four uh, uh networks out there one is a kind of network of computers you can call internet keep it simple and then this is an actor network and this is say a protein protein interaction network so each uh, entity here is a protein and uh, so there's an edge between two proteins if they really have some reaction between them there's an edge between two computers or two networks if there is some link uh, to transfer in information between the two computers or between two actors uh, you could model uh, a network um, involving the actors if they uh, acted in some common movie so for example these are the actor names uh, below each figure uh each photo but on the link you have the movie names so two actors are having an edge between them if there is a uh, what do you call them if they are acting act at least in one common movie so now i said one term called edge so that's what uh, uh, uh it calls a link or an edge between two uh, entities uh, now you see uh, these are called network but when you can model all these three networks as a graph in the sense that all the three pretty much have the same structure you have kind of like a triangle and then an uh, an edge to a, uh, an entity here so uh, this is what i mean by abstraction in the sense that even though it looks like three different networks with this graph based abstraction we can model this uh, three networks as a graph and what and we can run some graph algorithms on this uh, graph and get some results and all those results can be applied to this three networks okay now so the terminology you need to know is we'll call the circles as nodes it's also called vertices so a node or a vertex mean the same and there is an edge or a link between two nodes so that's the very basic terminology you should know so you can call these things as node or a vertex and this is called an edge or a link okay and it depends on how you model for example in the actor network we can say uh, there is uh, these nodes or the actors and uh, there is an edge between two actors if they are act at least in one common movie together and here the proteins or the nodes and there's an edge between two proteins if they have some interaction between them and the computers here are the nodes and there's an edge between two computers if they have a real physical link between them okay uh so these are uh, the terminologies we'll interchangeably use as i said network means graph node is also called vertex a link means an edge they are, they all uh, we can interchangeably use the terminology uh now coming to the edges now the edges could have some direction between them or they could be what is called undirected so when i say undirected first of first uh it means if you think like a communication network the communication can be only in that direction so think about these as a computers then the, you can really send information from 5 to 1 not from 1 to 5 okay or 5 to 2 not 2 to 5 you can also think about like a twitter as a directed graph 
So if these are the people in Twitter, it, uh, adapted edge from phi to 1 could mean that phi is following 1. And since 1 is not following phi, you don't have an edge back from 1 to phi. So Twitter is a good example for a directed graph. On the other hand, uh, we could also have what's called undirected graph, where you don't have directions for the edges, but uh, it implicitly means the communication uh, or the relationship is in both directions. So if you think like a communication network uh, as this undirected graph, uh, and an undirected edge from or between 1 to 5 means 1 can send something to 5, 5 can send something to 1. So you can communicate in both directions. So in social networks, uh, Facebook is a good example for uh, undirected graph because if 1 is a friend of 5, 5 is a friend of 1 too. It's not like in Twitter, right? So that's kind of a very basic difference uh, bet uh, between Twitter and Facebook on social, on, on an edge point of view, direction point of view. Now, we are going to study a lot of real-world networks um, to just give you a taste of a, a, a real-world network. This is um, a real-world network that was captured in 1960 in a dormitory uh, involving just girl students. Um, so these are the names of the students and uh, they wanted to kind of uh, what you call uh, pair each uh, one student to another student and put them in a, in a room. Uh, so, probably not a room or a dining table. Um, um, so, what they wanted to know was first, uh, instead of just uh, arbitrarily pairing two students, they wanted to get the preferences uh, from each student, who wanted to, who really preferred to pair with which other student. So, the numbers indicate the choices. So, Ada and Cora probably uh, said, each of the, like for Ada, Cora is a first choice, for Cora, Ada is a first choice. But look at Ada and say Louis. Ada, for Ada, Louis is a second choice. And Louis did, did not even say Ada is, is for her first or second choice. But on the other hand, Louis uh, says Marion is her first choice and Lena is her second choice and so on. So this is again a directed graph. And you could have some edges in both directions, like you have between Ada and Cora, but not like uh, uh, between any two students. Now, this is actually like a, so if you have a mix of both undirected as well as directed edges, we can call this as a hybrid graph. Okay, so these two simple cases are like pure directed and pure undirected graph, but here this is like a hybrid graph where you can have both directed as well as undirected edges. So once you generate a graph, so you, you get such data by running some surveys among students and ask their first and second choices for pairing in a dining table. And once you get such surveys from all the students, you can build this graph. Uh, and then you have an edge between two students if one student has listed some other student as a first or second choice and you have a directed edge. And then you run uh, some graph theory algorithms. You're going to also see some similar algorithms uh, related to this problem. Uh, it's like a matching algorithm that we need to run to find out uh, a kind of, like we don't really want to pair uh, people who don't like each other much. So that's why we gave the numbers one and two. So we really want to pair students who gave the first choice uh, for, with another student. Um, so, but still you cannot satisfy everyone. So we want to have kind of a maximal matching such that uh, uh, we'll try, the, the algorithm will try its best and uh, say this is the best it could do so that uh, there is overall the satisfaction is the maximum among the students on the, on the, on the base of this pairing. Okay, so later we'll look at metrics that can quantify uh, the maximum we can do this matching and so on. Okay, so right now I'm just kind of introducing the networks. Um, you could see one more networks and then look at the terminologies, one or two more. So this is another network uh, in real world, uh, football network in the US uh, in, in 2000, the year 2000. Um, so you know the college uh, colleges have football teams 
and uh, each team will play against another team. So this is like uh, a, a network of 115, 115 teams. Each team is modeled as a node and there's an edge between two teams if they have played against each other during this uh, 2000 season and there's no edge if they have not played against each other. Uh, so I'll stop here with this network and show you another network and then come back to this and compare with them. So this is uh, the US airport network uh, where the nodes here are the airports uh, out there and this was captured in 1997. Now it may be even more dense. So in 1997 they captured this network of airports and uh, the nodes are the airports and there's an edge between two airports if there is a connection between two airports. Um, now that means you can go from one airport to another airport to, an, to a plane. Um, now if you see the difference between these two airports uh, or the sort of networks, um, just by sure looking at it, uh, what do you think will, uh, is the difference between these two networks? Anyone can say? Visually, uh, I think the uh, the football network is not directional. Uh, football uh, network is what? Is not directional. Both are football. undirected. Uh, see, in a football network, uh, if two teams play against each other, of course they should have an undirected edge, right? It's not like one cannot have a directed edge in this case. Similarly, in the airport network, again, if there is a plane connection from one city to another city, you probably have a direct uh, connection on the reverse direction too. So both are undirected graphs. Uh, the difference, the visually at least, and actually even theoretically, mainly is in, uh, you see the distribution of the edges. In the airport network, you probably have uh, realized uh, even like in a physical basis that, you know, you cannot go from say Jackson to uh, say what, um, uh, some other small city somewhere out there, uh, say Jackson to, can anyone name a smaller city some, somewhere else, Tulsa, Oklahoma, somewhere. Uh, you cannot go right away, right? So what do you have to do? Uh, you have to go to a hub airport. From Jackson, probably you have to go to Atlanta. And from Atlanta, probably you have a connection to Tulsa, Oklahoma. Otherwise, uh, from Atlanta, you may have to go to, say, Dallas. And then from Dallas, you, uh, Dallas is another hub. And from there, you probably have to go to Oklahoma. So uh, the reason is Jackson as well as the uh, Tulsa are smaller cities, so they have only fewer connections, right? So Jackson is somewhere here, where it is, uh, it's here. So it's connected to Atlanta, no, this is Memphis, so somewhere connected to Atlanta. Uh, it depends on the airline too, each airline may have its own network, so I'm not sure which airline is this. Um, so, so you have what is called a hub node that has a lot of connections or edges to uh, other nodes and of course the hub nodes are also have, having more connections among each, uh, each other, with each other. So that's the kind nature of this airport network. Whereas in this football network, uh, you see um, uh, the nodes more or less have almost the same number of edges. Each node has almost the same number of edges to the other nodes. Uh, so, even though it uh, doesn't look that much, uh, of course it is um, looking almost even distribution of the edges and that's what it is. So each team has played against uh, in a, on a round robin basis. So you, you have 115 teams but uh, one team doesn't play against every other uh, team, right? So you have a round robin link where you group the teams and uh, each team there will be probably eight or ten group of teams and each team plays uh, in the round robin uh, stage with all their teams and their uh, other teams in the same group and then they go to the knockout stage and stuff like that. Uh, so each team more or less has the same number of edges to the other teams. 
So this is a very fundamental difference uh, um, that we notice in a lot of real world networks. Uh, distribution like this we call as a Poisson distribution and we'll see the details as we proceed but I'm just interested in the terminology where the edges are kind of evenly distributed uh, among the nodes whereas distributions like this is called the scale free distribution where there is some preference for edges you see what uh, I mean so not every city out there will like to get connected to Jackson because what's the point of getting connected to Jackson? From Jackson, they uh, no, but not many people travel from all those cities to Jackson uh, or go from Jackson to the other cities. But on the other hand, several cities out there will like to get connected to a hub node, say Atlanta or Dallas, so that because they get more money, the, uh, the airline companies should get more money eventually by running those plane connections. So that in this case, there's more, some preference among the nodes to get connected to each other. Uh, so that's called preferential attachment of the nodes uh, with some other nodes. Whereas here, the round robin stage, which is the stage where you'll have most of the uh, games played by the teams, right? The knockout stages, you have fewer games, probably three to four, uh, you will have a quarter final, final, semi final, and final, and stuff like that. So if you count the number of uh, games played again by each team uh, as the edges, right? So uh, the each each node is going to have almost around the same number of edges. So they're going to be different only based on who proceeded to the knockout stage and stuff like that. Um, so that's one main thing that we would see. So some some networks have edges distributed like this in a Poisson pattern and the other edges uh, no, networks have distributed like this in a scale-free pattern and most of the real world networks follow the scale-free uh, type uh, you can think about even social networks you know like in twitter uh, it's a directed network uh, but and still uh, you know you have a lot of people out there but most of the time m most twitter users are following the celebrities and uh, they have more followers uh, but the ordinary people, they don't have that many followers, right? So there is some preferential attachment of the edges. So we will look at all these things uh, as we proceed. So this is a better visualization of the airport network. So the same network, so there is, we'll run some software. Uh, there's a software called Gephi, uh, probably we'll run, do one assignment on that. And there are some visualization algorithms that could be run to visualize the network. Uh, in as uh, uh, effective fashion uh, so that we can get some information from that visualization itself and this is one good uh, case here so you have on the center you have the hub airport uh, and the size of the nodes also tell uh, as how many connections they have so there's a terminology called degree which I will introduce right away so the number of edges instant on a node is called the degree of a node so for example, if you think about this undirected graph, this node 4 has a degree of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It has a degree of 5. Whereas node 7 has a degree of 2. Node 1 has a degree of 3. Node 3 has a degree of 2. Node 2 has a degree of 3 and so on. So degree is basically the number of edges instant on a node. You can also call as the number of neighbors for a node. So for node 1, its three neighbors are 7, 3 and 4. For node 4, its neighbors are 1, 3, 2, 5 and 6. So you call those, the neighbors, the nodes are connected to the edges as neighbors. So the degree is basically the number of neighbors for a node. So now if you go back to the airport example here, uh, the, uh, what do you call the, um, uh, in, in Gephi, we can program uh, program means we can set it up in such a way that the uh, um, how much diameter you want to look uh, get for a node depends on its degree. So there is some airport out there that has a maximum degree. That means it has a lot of edges to the other nodes out there. Uh, so those are the hub airport nodes. Whereas you have on the periphery the smaller airports that don't have many edges so they have one or two a few edges to the hub airports 
and in between you have kind of medium level cities you know uh, cities uh, like salt lake city or even smaller cities uh, like even las vegas or uh, orlando and stuff like that they are not as big airport as atlanta or dallas or new york and so on and they are not as small as, as jackson either so they are in between so they have some reasonably large degree uh, so those are like in the in the middle uh, like on the in between the hub nodes and the periphery nodes so you could visualize like this and do a lot of analysis by running graph theory algorithms and that's what we'll do in the, sem in the semester uh, now we will come back to this also in more detail uh, so, uh, later but i just want to show you the Poisson distribution so if you plot the distribution of the degree, you get a nice bell-shaped curve like this. That's the nature of the Poisson distribution. Whereas if you plot the distribution of the degree in the scale-free network, you get like um, uh, what you call a long tail distribution or heavy tail distribution like this. Um, so even you see in the, in, the, in the football network, even though there are 115 nodes, you don't have uh, any node having a degree of 100 or 114. Uh, the degree is pretty much uh, of the nodes pretty much is from what you call 7 to 12. No node has even degree less than 7 and no node has degree greater than 12. All the no 115 nodes have degree that falls in the range of 7 to 12. So it's a pretty much narrow and it's a, like a bell shaped curve. So majority of the nodes have a degree of 11. That's kind of the average also for a Poisson distribution. Whereas in a scale-free network, you can think as I explained the airport network, you can see that some hub airports, so this is probably a network of 300 something airports, 334 airports. Some airport has a degree as large as close to 140. That means from that, that airport has connections to 140 other airports. Uh, but the probability of finding such an airport is very small. So on the y-axis we have the probability. Uh, so majority of the airports have degree one or two few, less than five probably. So so there are 16 percent of the airports we can say have a degree of one or two. So those are the airports that have a small degree, and they are in majority. Whereas you cannot say there is no airport with a very large degree. There are few airports. That's why it's called heavy tail distribution. Unlike the Poisson distribution, there's uh, the probability of finding a node with a very large degree close to the number of nodes in the network. Uh, in, the in the Poisson case, that's really zero. Whereas in the scale-free case, the tail, the, the, the distribution doesn't really end. Uh, you can say that's why it's a long tail or heavy tail. So there are some nodes that have a really large degree. But the probability of finding them is very small compared to nodes with a very few degree. So we will analyze the probability distribution uh, quite soon, probably today or next class, uh, probably today because it's a longer class, uh, and see how to compute these numbers, the probability thing that I showed you just now. We'll see how to compute these numbers. Okay, so I just gave an outline. Okay. Now let us get into the details. Uh, any question? Uh, probably not. I uh, will just get, uh, some. Some may not be clear. Some things, but I'll go through things now in detail. Uh, what we'll do is we'll stop this video. Uh, so from uh, regularly, I'll stop the video recording and uh, save it. Uh, for a, it will take a few uh, seconds, and then we'll come back and start this recording again because uh, I have to then process it as MP4 file so I don't want the video's file size to, to get very large as we